So today I'm going to be showing you how to set up the tool pads to be able to surface your spool board and put a grid on it. Stay tuned. Hi guys, so for those of you that don't know, my name is Michael and I am the woodworker for MK Designs. And if you remember in my previous video, I stated that I had to cut the video up into multiple pieces because the part it just got to be too long. Uh, so in the first video, I showed you how to create a spool board. This video is going to be about setting up the tool pads to be able to service the spool board and put a grid on it if that's what you want. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Let me get this out of the way. And we'll come over here to a spire. Now I'm using a spire, but all these steps will work in Cut 2D and VCarve Pro as well. I'm not creating any 3D content, so but Aspire is what I have, so that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to start out by creating a new file. I'll just click there. And typically what I like to do is I like to set up my workspace, my job setup, to be the same size as my spool board. And I, I recommend doing it this way because, because you, you run into some other things that you need to do if you make it bigger or smaller. But just I, I just I recommend just making it the size of your spool board. So in my case, my spool board is 24.5 inches in X and 52.5 inches in Y. Now, with my thickness here, for my Z setting, I don't, this isn't, this isn't an issue for me because I'm going to be servicing off the material surface. Um, my Z-Zero position is going to be off the material surface, not the machine bed. If I was going to set it to the machine bed, then I would need to make sure that I put in the thickness of my material. But since I'm surfacing off the material surface and I'm not going to be cutting through it, it doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to go ahead and set it to three quarters of an inch anyway. And it, again, this is a single-sided job. We're not doing any double-sided or rotary work on this. Um, my Z-Zero position is going to be the material surface. And my XY datum position, I actually want to put that to the bottom left corner here because, if you see, it puts the little red dot down here. That is the home position of my machine. So when I home it, that is the position it goes to. And I want to start both of these tool paths in this position here. So that modeling resolution doesn't matter uh, because we're not making any 3D, 3D content. So you can change that to standard if you would like. And material settings, you can set that to whatever you like. And we just click OK. And we're set up here. So the first thing I want to do is I want to set, create the spool, the servicing tool path. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create a rectangle. And I want my rectangle to be exactly the same size as my, my sheet over here, my workspace. So I'm going to have it anchor to the bottom left corner. My X position and my Y position are both set to zero. So that will start it right down here on this corner. And I want square corners. You can do radius corners if you'd like, but just I, I prefer to keep just keep them square. That way it's all just, it's very straightforward compared to that. So as far as the size, there's a couple things you can do. If you remember your measurements, you can come in here. So like at my X is 24.5, so I can type 24.5. Or what I can do is I can actually go X equals and it does it automatically and for the y i just go y equals and again it just pops it in there and i hit create close that and i come over here and you can see i now have a rectangle going around my entire work surface over here so that's for my spool board but before i move any further i'm going to go ahead and i'm going to put this on its own layer so i'm going to move move this to a new layer and i'm going to call that layer surface and I'm going to actually make this one invisible for the moment. I'm going to uncheck new layer is visible. And I don't want it to be my active layer. So I'm going to click OK. And now I'll come up here and you can see I've got two layers. Layer 1 and layer, and layer surface. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add another layer. And I'm going to call it grid. So for your spool board, that rectangle is all you need. For servicing the spool board, that rectangle is all you need. You don't need any other vectors or anything of that nature. Um, as you can see, I've got my grid. It's my active layer now. And so I'm going to turn off layer one, and there's a reason for that. I'll, I'll show you in here in just a moment. So now to create my grid, 
I'm going to, this is the way I do it. This is the way I found to do it. There's multiple ways that you can do it. This is the way that I found that is the fastest and easiest for me. Um, if there's an easier way for you to do it, by all means do it that way. But this is the way I'm going to, I recommend doing it because it's the one I found to be the fastest and the easiest. So I'm going to come over here to my polyline tool and I'm just going to, I'm not going to fill in any of these, any of these spaces up here. I'm just going to come over and I'm going to start drawing. So I'm going to start down here at my home position and I'm going to click and I'm going to bring a line up straight up the Y 90 degree angle. 52.5 inches and click again and you can see it's now anchored there but what I want to do is I want to come directly over along the X or the width and I want to type in one enter and what that does is it creates a one inch line and it anchors my next line to that point and I'm gonna come straight down from there and I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna go across the X again one enter and then I'm going to hit and you can see it's got an anchor right there but now I'm going to hit escape to get out of the polyline tool and now I've got this one single vector here now I could keep going and drawing up and coming over again drawing up coming coming come drawing down coming over again and so forth and so on until I get all the way to the end but there's an easier way to do this um, another way you could do it is if I click on it again you can see that all my manipulation handles come up. So I can actually move this, copy it, whatever I want to do. If I hold down control and I click on the corner down here, I can actually, and I hold down, I don't just click, I just click and hold. I can actually bring it over and I can make multiple copies that way. But again, there is a much easier way to do this. So I'm going to control Z out of that. And then I'm going to select my vector again. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to go to Array Copy. The Array Copy tool will actually allow me to make multiple copies in any direction that I need and put them where I need them. So what I'm going to do is for rows, I only need one because I only want one of these along my Y. And I'm moving my hands like you can see me, but you can't. <laughs> but I only need one of these along the Y. If you remember, my measurement here is 24.5, so I need roughly 12 to 13 of these along the X. Basically, you're going to take your measurement and divide it in half, and that's what you would need. Because if you, if you look at it, you're covering two inches here. From here to here, you're covering two inches. So we're going to put in 13. And I don't want any kind of a gap or an offset between these. I want them touching each other as they go along. So I'm going to make sure my both of these are set to zero. And I don't need any row or column displacement. So both of those are set to zero. And I don't want to group the copies. All right, so I hit copy. And you can see that it has created all of these over here. So I'll close out of this. And I've got this little bit extra over here that I don't need. Now, there's a couple ways you can handle this. You can actually go into note edit mode and delete the parts you don't need. And then put in the one you do. Because I actually do want the half inch line that comes along along here so you can do that you can come over here and deselect everything and then select that one hit press n to go into note edit mode and i can go in here and i can hover over it and press d to delete the span or i can right click on it and delete span like right there but there's another thing that you can do i'm still in note edit mode what i'm going to do is i'm going to come up here to this vector this point up here this node and I'm going to simply move it straight across over to here distance of 0.5 so now that point is right there but if I back out you'll notice that it's still down here I could have done both of these at the same time and the way I would do that is I would select this one hold down shift select this one and then I want to zoom in so I can actually see what exactly what I'm doing. And now it will move both of them at the same time. I zoom back out. I've got a straight line down there that's a half inch away from this one. But I don't need this leg right here. So I'm going to come back in here and I'm going to hover over it and press D. And what that did was that deleted the node. You don't want it to delete the node. <clears throat> So we're going to control Z 
So what I can do is I can actually delete this point and it deletes the line. Now, these are all still single vectors. So if I click here, it selects, well, let me get back, let me right click twice to get out of node edit mode. So if I click here, it selects that one. But then if I click over here, it selects this one. It doesn't select them all. And we want all these to be one vector. So what we're going to do, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can drag from the top left down and encompass the whole thing and it will select them all. Or you can simply start over on the right, drag over, and it selects them all. Basically, what when you come from the left down, it selects, selects everything that's inside your boundary box. If you come from the left or from the right over, it selects everything that touches the bounding box. So that's an easier way to do that. So now that I've got them all selected, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to hit join. And as you can see, selected vectors, I have 13 open, but after joining, I'll have one open. Now, a lot of people think you can only use this to take a lot of open, a lot of open vectors and make them one closed vector, but that's not true. You can actually create let fewer open vectors with it as well. So I'll click join. And now when I come over here, I can click anywhere and it will select all of them because they are now one vector. Okay. So now that I've got, this is what I, this is my X part of the grid and I call it the X. Yes, it runs along the Y, but if you notice it's counting from zero to 24 and, or 20, yeah, 24 and a half. Um, along the X. So this is my X grid. So, but I want this out of the way for a moment and that's why I hid layer one. So I'm going to right click on this and I'm going to move this temporarily over to layer one. I don't want it there forever, but I just want it temporarily. So if I come up here now and I turn on layer one, you can see there it is. So I'll turn this off for now and now I'm going to create the Y grid and I'm going to do it in a similar fashion, but a little bit different. So I'm going to select my polyline tool and I'm going to come over to the bottom right corner. Now, the reason I want to go to the bottom right corner is because when my toolpath starts, it's going to start here in this corner. It's going to go up, come over, and it's going to just continue along the X and it's going to come down and it's going to finish this corner. When I'm, when I'm done, I don't want it to pick up and move back over here to start the, the Y grid. I want it to stay right where it is and just continue on. And that'll make sense here in just a moment. So I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to come along the X all the way over to 24.5 and click. Then I'm going to go up the Y and again, one enter. And I'm going to come back over to 24.5 and make sure my angles is zero. Click. And then I'm going to come up the Y again, one enter. And then I'll hit escape. And now I have this vector and I'm going to use the array copy tool again, but I'm going to change it. So in this case, I want one column, but I need 27 rows. So 52 divided by five is 26 and a half. So actually I need 26 and a half, but I'm gonna put 27, put a whole number in there. Uh, again, no gap or offset. So both these are still to zero and row column displacement, zero. Don't group the copies. If this box is checked, uncheck it. And I'm going to click copy. And there we have it. We have all the lines we need for our Y, or, yeah, our y grid. And once again, I, need, I have this little bit up here that I need to get rid of. So I'm going to select this one, go into node edit mode. And then this, I'm going to go ahead and delete this point. And then I'm going to select this one, hold down shift, select this one, zoom in and move them down to right there. And now I've got, yep, there we go. And now I've got the lines that I need and I need to group them. So I'm going to select all of them or not group them. I need to join them. And I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna hit join and open 27. And once I'm joined, open one, boom, just like that. Now all these are one vector. 
Now, we're going to bring back in our Y grid. So we're going to, our X grid. So we're going to select this, and I can go right here, and I can double click this, and it will select that grid. Then I come over here, and I right click, move to layer grid. And I want to make sure that my grid is my active layer. I can actually go ahead and hide this like, layer one again, and you see it's blank now, so it doesn't have anything on it. So no, there's no vectors on it at all. And I'm going to select everything like this. And there's a couple ways I could do that. I could do it the way I just did it. Or I could actually come in here, click once, hold down shift, and then click on the other set of lines. And then click, it selects them all. And then I'm going to come over and I'm going to hit join again. And as you can see, it's going to join these two vectors into one big open vector. And that's what I want. The reason I want that is because I am trying to reduce the number of rapid moves. If So I'm going to go ahead and click join. I'm going to close. So essentially what happens, a lot of people, they'll start here, they'll draw a line up, and then they'll come over and draw another line down, draw another line up. What happens is when you, when you go to run the file, it's going to draw, it's going to cut, carve this line right here, and then it's going to raise up, move over, Right, come do your plunge move again and then come back down and all of these ups and moves and back downs is called a rapid move and you don't you want to minimize those as much as you possibly can okay so the way that the reason I do this is because this is going to be one solid move there will be no rapid moves between each of these squares it's going to go up cut the y then it's going to come down and it's going to come down, it's going to come across and start cutting the X. Well, X then Y. You, you get what I'm saying. Okay, so now that we have all our vectors, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to come in here and I'm going to turn on the surface because I want to actually surface this thing first. I'm going to turn off the grid for now. But I want to make sure my surface is my active layer. And now I'm going to come over to toolpaths. So for the surfacing, we're going to actually use a pocket toolpath. And we're going to have our start depth of zero. And our cut depth, you can set this to whatever you like. I typically like to go a 64th to a 32nd of an inch. And I have it set for a 64th right now. And that's what I want. Um, you can set it for a 32nd or an eighth or a quarter, whatever you'd like. But I recommend, I like taking as shallow a pass as I possibly can. That way, and still get the spool board flat. That way, I have a lot more spool board left after the surfacing is done to work with. And I'm using a white side spool board bit. It's a two inch bit. And I'll come over here and I'll show you this real quick. So I put it in as an end mill. It's a two inch diameter. Uh, it has four flutes, a uh, pass depth of one inch. That's half of the diameter. But we're not going that far. We're only going a 64th of an inch with each pass. My step over is set to 40%. Um, I could actually lower this, but I don't really need to. Um, I just want to make sure that it's it, it's going to overlap with each pass, and it's not going to leave a gap between the two. So 40% is, is a good round number for this. A lot of people say that you should run this bit slower than 60,000 RPM, 16,000 RPMs, but that's that's not what I've found. What I found is 16,000 is a good speed for this bit. I wouldn't go much faster than that, but 16,000 is a good speed for this bit. Um, I get a good chip load from it, and it works just fine. Uh, I have my feed rate set because I'm working with MDF on with this particular bit at 150 inches per minute. I could probably go a little bit faster than that, but 150 is what I'm comfortable with right now. And I've got my plunge rate set at 20. That, that I could speed that up as well, but I, I just don't. So that's the bit that I'm using. So I've got that bit selected, and I'm going to use an offset for this. Um, it works a little bit faster than using the raster. A raster move moves the bit back and forth or up and down or whatever angle you, you set the raster angle at. And I'm gonna use a climb cut for this one. Uh, the, the offset starts in the center and works its way out in rectangles and like so, so forth and so on. Uh, so it, it, it's a little bit faster because it gets both directions at one time, pretty much versus having to come across this way and then having to go back and up forth this way. You can do either one, but I've just found that the offset works a little bit faster. 
and I'm going to ramp my plunge moves. Now, the reason I'm going to ramp these plunge moves, this is a two inch bit and the cutters are on the outside edge of that bit and they're about a quarter inch wide. So you're looking at about an inch and a half of space in the middle of that bit that absolutely no cutting is being done. So you want to ramp the plunge moves so that it can actually cut the entire way it's entire time it's coming down versus just plunging in and nothing cutting in the middle. You can actually throw things off and do some damage if you if you're not careful with that. But uh, typically on a on a plunge on a ramp plunge move, you're going to go three to four times the diameter of your bit. Because I'm working with MDF and this bit is so aggressive, uh, a distance of four time four inches, so two times my the diameter of my bit will work just fine on that. Now, we are going to want a pocket allowance, but I'm going to leave this zero for now just so I can show you why we're going to want a pocket allowance. Now, for the vector selection, I could come over here and I could select this and then just finish out. But I want to show you this neat little trick. So if I come in here and I hit selector, I'm going to check closed vectors and I'm going to associate with the toolpath. The reason I'm going to associate with the toolpath is so that if I wanted to copy this as a toolpath template later on, I, the it would already be in here and I'll, all my settings would be exactly the way I need them to be and I wouldn't have to change anything. So that's why I'm doing that. And then I'm going to select surface over here for the visible, for the layer that I want. And I'm going to close this. And now you can see it says automatic and it has the vector, so the rectangle around my surface selected. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to change this to surface. That's what we're going to call it. And we're going to hit calculate. And as you can see, this is the way it's going to work. The bits, this is the cent, this is representing the center of the bit. So it's going to start over here, and it's going to come over to the roughly the center on along the X. And it's going to that light blue means is the ramp move. So it's going to start cutting. It's going to come up this way, and then it's going to come back, and then it's going to start moving around in this direction. And if I come over to the 2D view, you can see the arrows. It's showing exactly how it is running. All right. And what it actually does is it comes up up here and comes over and it comes back and then it comes down along this line here. It doesn't lift up, it just moves along, along right here and then starts coming around again and so forth and so on until it gets all the way out to the outside. What I wanted to show you, if I run it right now, you won't be able to see it. So I'm gonna change my toolpath color to black so that it stands out and I'm gonna preview. And you can see that I've got these little corners up here. That means it didn't get all of the surface area. It's actually, if I zoom, if I go in a little bit, you can act, you see just barely, because I'm only going to 64th of an inch, that it's lifted up right there. It's not cutting that. And if I rotate to the side, you can see there's little areas. You can barely see them, but there's little areas. So there's like a little lip around the edge of it. It's not cutting all the way out like I want it to do. So I'm going to move this back out, and we're going to fix that. And the way we do that is by adding a pocket. But I want to select this because I want to show you something else as well. There's another way to see it. If I come over to the 2D view and I select Toggle Toolpath 2D Drawing Style, it now turns everything blue. And you can see that it's got those little corners clipped and barely visible along the edges. But it's there. And if I zoom in on that corner, you can see it's, it's that this is where it's stopping. The bit is coming this way, and that's it. Um... So what we're going to do is we're going to create a profile or a, yeah, a pocket allowance. Uh, so we go back into the toolpath. And the, on this one, we're going to want a negative pocket allowance. If you create a positive pocket allowance, it will actually cut. It will actually bring the bit further in closer to the center and cut less of the material. So, But if you do a negative, it pushes the pocket out. So that's what we want. And I happen to know from experience that this is going to be three-eighths of an inch. But if you don't know, then you can start with a, an eighth of an inch or quarter inch or whatever. So let me show you. So if I go negative 0.25 and hit calculate again, we don't have to run this again to see it. We can come back over here. And as you can see, it looks good. But if I zoom in just a little bit, it's still got that little corner up there. And in a lot of cases, that might be good enough because the, the, you might have rounded edges on your spool board and that works just just fine, but if you want to make sure that you get it, then you want to make it a little bit bigger. So like I said, I know from experience that this is going to be three-eighths of an inch. So I'll go negative 0.375. Now, if you 
don't remember the decimal for three eighths, you can actually go three slash eight equals, but you need to make sure you put the negative in there. And just like that. And again, we still got our vector selection set to automatic and we hit calculate. And now if I reset this, let me go over and show you the 2D first. Now you can see that it's covering that entire corner and that's what I want. So I come over here, I reset it and I preview it again. It's all solid black, just like I want it to be. So that's my surfacing. Okay, so now we need to start working on the grid tool path. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna reset this preview. And then I'm going to come back over to my 2D view and I'm gonna come up here to layers and I'm going to turn off my surface layer. I'm gonna turn on my grid layer and I'm gonna make it my active layer. And now I see I've got my grids here, my, yeah, my grid. So the way we're gonna create this is we're gonna use a profile tool path. So I'm gonna cut these a 32nd of an inch deep. And if you don't know the, if you wanna make them 32nd of an inch deep and you don't know the, the decimal equivalent, you can go one divided by 32, equals, and there it is. And I'm using a 90 degree V bit for this. Now I've already got this bit set up, but if I come over here and I hit select, you can see that my defaults for my 90 degree V bit is, specifically I wanna look at the feed rate and the plunge rate. I've got them set to 50 and 12. That's typical, that's my defaults for them. I don't wanna use, I wanna go a little bit faster than that. So I'm gonna close this, and let's, let's say I haven't selected the bit. I'll just go ahead and show you this. So I select this bit and then I come up here and I click on edit. And this will allow me to change all of this, all of these, all these, all of this for this toolpath only. It won't change my defaults. If I change them in the other area where I selected the bit, it will change the defaults and that will be what it puts in every time. But I don't want that to be every time. I don't want these these settings for every single time. I just want them for this tool path. So I'm gonna come down here, I'm gonna change my feed rate to 150, and I'm gonna go ahead and change my plunge rate to 50. And we'll click OK. And I know that those work because that's what I've used in the past and they work just fine. I don't need any ramp moves, any, any ramp moves on this because I'm using a V bit and the entire sur surface of that bit cuts. So I don't really need the ramp moves. You can use them. And if I, use, if I was going into hardwood with this, I probably would ramp them. But because I'm going into MDF, I'm, I'm not worried about it at this point. So we're going to be cutting on the lines. We don't want it to cut outside or inside. We want it directly on the lines. Climb cut. Don't need a separate last path. We don't need to add tabs because we're not cutting through. And we don't need to change any of this stuff because of the way I set up the vector. It's going to, I, I don't need to change the order that I put, put in any lead, start at, none of that. I don't need to change any of that because of the way I set it up. At least that's the way it's been working for me. And I don't need to, like I said, I don't need the ramp moves and I need to get my vector selected. So I can come over here and I can click on them and I can select them that way. Or I can do the vector selection like I wanted to, like I did before. But in this case, I need to make sure that open vectors is selected right here. If it's not, it won't recognize them. See how it turns them off back there? But as soon as I click on it, it's selecting them again. And again, I'm going to go ahead and associate it with the toolpath and make sure the grid layer is the one that's selected and click close. And then I will change this to grid and click calculate. And I'm going to slow this down so you can see what I'm referring to about how it cuts. And I don't need to change the toolpath color because with this one you'll actually be able to see. And we'll preview, select the toolpath. And as you can see, it cuts the X grid first going up and down along the Y. And it's not lifting up. There's no rapid moves on it. Once it gets down here into the bottom right corner, it starts to cut the Y grid going back and forth along the X. And it cuts it down significantly. The first time I did this, I didn't go through this process and I didn't set it up this way. I did the straight lines and it had a bunch of rapid moves and it took almost an hour to cut the grid. But now I can come over here and I can show you that with this, the time it's going to take, it's not 
and it's not dead on accurate, but it's close. 18 minutes to cut my grid. So a huge time different, time savings. And for my surface, I've got it 11 minutes. So in half an hour, in, in less than half an hour, I can have my spool board surfaced and ready to go. So that's how you set those up. Um, from here, all you have to do is go in and save them. So like I would select the surfacing bit and I would click save toolpath, this button right here, save toolpath. And then make sure your post process, your post processor for your machine is selected, click save and then save it wherever you need to. Um, some people are able to actually take it from here and send it to their machine. Um, others have to save it out as a, most, most probably have to save it out as a separate, uh, file and run it through your, your machine software. I have a pendant for mine, so I would save this to a thumb drive and then plug in the thumb drive into my pendant and that will allow me to run it from there. I don't need a separate laptop. And then I would just select grid and do the same thing. Save the toolpath. And that's that. That is how you set up the tool pads to be able to surface your spool board and create the grid. So if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. And until next time, guys, happy creating.